Section 17 of Gray's Anatomy, Part 2. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by The Bodster. Anatomy of the Human Body, Part 2, by Henry Gray. Section 7b, The Knee Joint. Articulatio Genu. The knee joint was formerly described as the ginglimus, or hinge joint, but is really of a much more complicated character. It must be regarded as consisting of three articulations in one, two condyloid joints, one between each condyle of the femur and the corresponding meniscus and the condyle of the tibia, and a third between the patella and the femur, part arthrodial, but not completely so since the articular surfaces are not mutually adapted to each other, so that the movement is not a simple gliding one. This view of the construction of the knee joint receives confirmation from the study of the articulation in some of the lower mammals, where, corresponding to these three subdivisions, three synovial cavities are sometimes found, either entirely distinct or only connected together by small communications. This view is further rendered probable by the existence in the middle of the joint of the two cruciate ligaments, which must be regarded as the collateral ligaments of the medial and lateral joints. The existence of the patella fold of synovial membrane would further indicate a tendency to separation of the synovial cavity into two minor sacs, one corresponding to the lateral and the other to the medial joint. The bones are connected together by the following ligaments. The articular capsule, the ligamentum patellae, the oblique popliteal, the tibial collateral, the fibula collateral, the anterior cruciate, the posterior cruciate, the medial and lateral menisci, the transverse, and the coronary. The articular capsule, capsula articularis, capsula ligament. The articular capsule consists of a thin but strong fibrous membrane, which is strengthened in almost its entire extent by bands inseparably connected with it. Above and in front, beneath the tendon of the quadriceps femoris, it is represented only by the synovial membrane. Its chief strengthening bands are derived from the fascia lata and from the tendons surrounding the joint. In front, expansions from the vasti and from the fascia lata and its iliotibial band fill in the intervals between the anterior and collateral ligaments, constituting the medial and lateral patella retinacula. Behind the capsule consists of vertical fibres which arise from the condyles and from the sides of the intercondyloid fossa of the femur. The posterior part of the capsule is therefore situated on the sides of and in front of the cruciate ligaments, which are thus excluded from the joint cavity. Behind the cruciate ligaments is the oblique popliteal ligament, which is augmented by fibres derived from the tendon of the semimembranosus. Laterally, a prolongation from the iliotibial band fills in the interval between the oblique popliteal and the fibula collateral ligaments, and partly covers the latter. Medially, expansions from the sartorius and the semimembranosus pass upward to the tibial collateral ligament and strengthen the capsule. The ligamentum patellae, anterior ligament. The ligamentum patellae is the central portion of the common tendon of the quadriceps femoris, which is continued from the patella to the tuberosity of the tibia. It is a strong, flat, ligamentous band, about 8 cm in length, attached above to the apex and adjoining margins of the patella and the rough depression on its posterior surface. Below, to the tuberosity of the tibia, its superficial fibres are continuous over the front of the patella with those of the tendon of the quadriceps femoris. The medial and lateral portions of the tendon of the quadriceps pass down on either side of the patella to be inserted into the upper extremity of the tibia on either side of the tuberosity. These portions merge into the capsule, as stated above, forming the medial and lateral patella retinacula.
The posterior surface of the ligamentum patellae is separated from the synovial membrane of the joint by a large infrapatella pad of fat, and from the tibia by a bursa. The oblique popliteal ligament, ligamentum popliteum obliquum posterior ligament. This ligament is a broad, flat, fibrous band formed of fasciculi separated from one another by apertures from the passage of vessels and nerves. It is attached above to the upper margin of the intercondyloid fossa and posterior surface of the femur, close to the articular margins of the condyles, and below to the posterior margin of the head of the tibia. Superficial to the main part of the ligament is a strong fasciculus, derived from the tendon of the semimembranosus, and passing from the back part of the medial condyle of the tibia, obliquely upward and lateralward, to the back part of the lateral condyle of the femur. The oblique popliteal ligament forms part of the floor of the popliteal fossa, and the popliteal artery rests upon it. The tibial collateral ligament, ligamentum collateral tibial, internal lateral ligament. The tibial collateral is a broad, flat, membranous band, situated nearer to the back than to the front of the joint. It is attached above to the medial condyle of the femur immediately below the adductor tubercle, below to the medial condyle and medial surface of the body of the tibia. The fibres of the posterior part of the ligament are short and inclined backward as they descend. They are inserted into the tibia above the groove for the semimembranosus. The anterior part of the ligament is a flattened band about 10 centimetres long, which inclines forward as it descends. It is inserted into the medial surface of the body of the tibia about 2.5 centimetres below the level of the condyle. It is crossed at its lower part by the tendons of the sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus a bursa being interposed. Its deep surface covers the inferior medial genicular vessels and nerve, and the anterior portion of the tendon of the semimembranosus, with which it is connected by a few fibres. It is intimately adherent to the medial meniscus. The fibular collateral ligament, ligamentum collateral fibular, external lateral or long external lateral ligament. The fibular collateral is a strong, rounded, fibrous cord attached above to the back part of the lateral condyle of the femur, immediately above the groove for the tendon of the popliteus, below to the lateral side of the head of the fibula in front of the styloid process. The greater part of its lateral surface is covered by the tendon of the biceps femoris. The tendon, however, divides at its insertion into two parts, which are separated by the ligament. Deep to the ligament are the tendon of the popliteus and the inferior lateral genicular vessels and nerve. The ligament has no attachment to the lateral meniscus. An inconstant bundle of fibres, the short fibular collateral ligament, is placed behind and parallel with the preceding, attached above to the lower and back part of the lateral condyle of the femur, below to the summit of the styloid process of the fibula. Passing deep to it are the tendon of the popliteus and the inferior lateral genicular vessels and nerve. The cruciate ligaments, ligamenta, cruciata genu, crucial ligaments. The cruciate ligaments are of considerable strength, situated in the middle of the joint, nearer to its posterior than to its anterior surface. They are called cruciate because they cross each other somewhat like the lines of the letter X and have received the names anterior and posterior from the position of their attachments to the tibia. The anterior cruciate ligament, ligamentum cruciatum anterius, external crucial ligament, is attached to the depression in front of the intercondyloid eminence of the tibia, being blended with the anterior extremity of the lateral meniscus. It passes upward, backward and lateralward and is fixed into the medial and back part of the lateral condyle of the femur. The posterior cruciate ligament, ligamentum cruciatum posterius, internal crucial ligament, is stronger but shorter and less oblique in its direction than the anterior. 
it is attached to the posterior intercondyloid fossa of the tibia and to the posterior extremity of the lateral meniscus and passes upward, forward and medialward to be fixed into the lateral and front part of the medial condyle of the femur. The menisci, semilunar fibrocartilages. The menisci are two crescentic lamellae which serve to deepen the surfaces of the head of the tibia for articulation with the condyles of the femur. The peripheral border of each meniscus is thick, convex, and attached to the inside of the capsule of the joint. The opposite border is thin, concave, and free. The upper surfaces of the menisci are concave and in contact with the condyles of the femur. Their lower surfaces are flat and rest upon the head of the tibia, both surfaces are smooth and invested by synovial membrane. Each meniscus covers approximately the peripheral two-thirds of the corresponding articular surface of the tibia. The medial meniscus, meniscus medialis, internal semilunar fibrocartilage, is nearly semicircular in form, a little elongated from before backward and broader behind than in front. Its anterior end, thin and pointed, is attached to the anterior intercondyloid fossa of the tibia in front of the anterior cruciate ligament. Its posterior end is fixed to the posterior intercondyloid fossa of the tibia between the attachments of the lateral meniscus and the posterior cruciate ligament. The lateral meniscus, meniscus lateralis, external semilunar fibrocartilage, is nearly circular and covers a larger portion of the articular surface than the medial one. It is grooved laterally for the tendon of the popliteus, which separates it from the fibular collateral ligament. Its anterior end is attached in front of the intercondyloid eminence of the tibia, lateral to and behind the anterior cruciate ligament, with which it blends. The posterior end is attached behind the intercondyloid eminence of the tibia and in front of the posterior end of the medial meniscus. The anterior attachment of the lateral meniscus is twisted on itself so that its free margin looks backward and upward, its anterior end resting on a sloping shelf of bone on the front of the lateral process of the intercondyloid eminence. Close to its posterior attachment, it sends off a strong fasciculus, the ligament of Risberg, which passes upward and medialward to be inserted into the medial condyle of the femur, immediately behind the attachment of the posterior cruciate ligament. Occasionally a small fasciculus passes forward to be inserted into the lateral part of the anterior cruciate ligament. The lateral meniscus gives off from its anterior convex margin a fasciculus which forms the transverse ligament. The transverse ligament, ligamentum transversum genu. The transverse ligament connects the anterior convex margin of the lateral meniscus to the anterior end of the medial meniscus. Its thickness varies considerably in different subjects, and it is sometimes absent. The coronary ligaments are merely portions of the capsule, which connect the periphery of each meniscus with the margin of the head of the tibia. End of section 17, the knee joint. Recording by the Bodster. From The Human Body, Part 2, by Henry Gray.